encourage people to do more right so radhe radhe good morning good evening everyone a very warm welcome to today's edition of daily wisdom from bhagavad gita so let's get started i'm going to share my screen and we will get underway we will continue with our discussion on the paratatva that we are doing we'll do a compare and contrast today and between today and tomorrow we'll wrap up this shloka and then introduce the next one uh but as a course of uh, you know this bhagavad gita journey when we pick up a shloka we do cross references go back and forth so uh, you know today i'm going to talk go a little fast forward and pick up a shloka that will help us drive the conversation forward as well so again a very warm welcome to all of you i want to share my screen and then we will get started with our opening prayers guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwar ha guru sakshat par brahma tasmay shri gurave namah vasudev sutam devam kamsachanuramardanam devaki paramanandam vishnam vande jagat guru krishnam vande jagat guru radhe good morning good evening everyone so let's get started with our uh, soul soup segment like we always do so yesterday we briefly talked about habits and today i'm going to introduce uh, one of the attributes of our brains that will help us uh, build that part and continue with that with that discussion okay continue with that discussion so as part of this uh, you know what we repeatedly harbor a pattern of when we repeatedly harbor a pattern of thoughts their neural circuit circuit becomes etched in the brain this is how the brain works now it is said that seeing is believing okay so let me show you look at it okay this is how the neural circuits will get formed so um in fact our brain continues to pack uh, neurons the gray matter it you know it it, it gets packed in our brain at an accelerated pace until an age of i think 11 or 12 but those neural pathways they continue to be formed throughout our lives so you can nc2 right mathematically if you look at the combination if you have two points how many combinations can be formed and we have millions and trillions of those neurons so we have the ability to pick up things but anyways the point here is when we repeat such certain third thought pattern in our mind uh then uh, it it just becomes forms a certain neural circuitry or pattern around it and all of us have a classical conditioning of our brain okay and that conditioning drives us so this conditioning let's first understand it and then see how we can make this conditioning work in our uh, work to our benefit so what is this conditioning that we talk about so you look at this elephant a big elephant and if you see it is tied to a very in a small rope and and a maybe a, a wooden uh, you know some kind of planks stuck to the ground dug in the ground and if you you would see that elephant it just all it needs is a big push and it can walk away to freedom but apparently it doesn't how does that work the way it works is because the mahouts the people who actually um, you know own these elephants or work with these elephants the owners of these elephants when they when they get an ele- elephant a younger elephant they tie it to a rope and uh, uh, and secure it and the rope even though it is weak uh, the elephant because it is small it continues to tug it in vain and realizes that there is no point to tug it further and it thinks that um, and then it stops and stands still because that effort is futile it's not able to okay so that rope the strength of that rope and that twig stuck into the ground is good enough to hold that elephant but what happens is as this elephant grows old so after a point it mind its mind gives up it is conditioned that i cannot walk away to freedom so it's pointless to even try that but when it grows old 
it continues to carry that conditioning and you can you know bind it with, with that same rope and twig without having to worry whether it will you know walk away to freedom or not and this is called the elephant has been conditioned and this is how our conditioning works as well similarly uh, you know there's a this is a neuroplasty nature of our brain once you condition it, those synapses are formed and they're going to continue to honor that synapses unless you systematically dismantle that and form new set of synapses. You know, Pavlo, uh, there was a guy called Pavlo, I think he won a Nobel Prize as well um, for medicine in 19, early 1900s. Uh, he carried out an experiment with dogs. So what he would do is, he he you know, there were some dogs they had kept and then some laboratory assistants, they would wear white coats and ring a bell and then feed the dogs. And uh, when, you know, they would do, they repeated that exercise and then there would be, a, uh, after a few days, what happened was that the dogs, they would start to salivate. You know, uh, the moment the bell was rung, even though they were not fed anything. And after a while, they would start salivating even though the the bell was not rung, just at the sight of white coats, that is also called conditioning. It is called classical conditioning. So this is the case of animals, but the fact is, fact of the matter is, we humans are also conditioned in a lot of ways. Right? We look at the world through that prism. This is how it's supposed to be. Right? Everything. We have a very strong viewpoint about something. This is a how saint should look like. This is what life is all about. This is how a bahu should be like, right? Some stereotypical. This is how a dal should be. All these are stereotypes um, and our conditioning that, that has been enforced to us or we have inculcated it because of our upbringing, what we have seen around and the conditioning that we have been subjected to. So the question, big question is, how can we leverage this nature of neuroplasticity or conditioning to our benefit? Right. If it can happen on one ways, which we see happening, happens automatically all by itself without we having to put in any effort, how can we make it work to our advantage? And this is what we will explore as part of this mind management series in the subsequent sessions. So with that said, now let's move on to our topic of our discussion. I've picked up 9.31 today because as part of 5.18, we're talking about Paratattva. Tomorrow we'll conclude that discussion because there are a couple of other aspects that we need to talk about, Sadhan, Sadhya and and uh, uh, you know some of the other aspects we'll conclude it tomorrow so today we are going to do a compare and contrast around all the aspects of gods that we have spoken about so i'm going to recite this shloka we'll pick up three hands kshipram bhavati dharmatma shashwachantim nigachati kanteya pratijanihi name bhakti it's a very important shloka and one of my favorite ones as well. I'll tell you why. So let's take a couple of hands and then we'll get moving. Sanjay, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Shipram bhavati dharmatma shashwa chantim nigachati kaunteya pratijani pratijani Nami Bhakta Pranashati. Yes, thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Pranashyati. Thank you. Right, nice. Thank you. Let's take maybe a couple of hands who are on the video right now. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Shipram Bhavti Dharmatma. Shashvach Shantin Yagachyati. Kaunteya Pratijani. Name Bhakta Pranashyati. Radhe Radhe. Okay, we'll probably take a couple of hands who are on video and then move forward because we have a lot of stuff to cover today. Radhe, Radhe. Oh, Radhe, Radhe, sorry. Uh, Shipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shashvachantim Nigachati Kaunteya Pratijani Name Bhakta Pranashyati 
Very nice. I would encourage all of you to keep on reciting as many times as you possibly can. Just recitation of Bhagavad Gita Shloka is very auspicious, right? So we do it. I mean, you all have an opportunity to repeat it as many times as people who are on, you know, reciting it here. Lots of last hand and then we get going. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Shipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shashvachantim Nagachati Kaunte Ya Pratijani Name Bhakta Pranashyati. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. So, Praviji, Riyaji, Udeji, we'll pick your, we'll give you a preference tomorrow. Let's get it moving now. So, in this shloka, Lord Krishna is saying that quickly they become virtuous. Okay, there's a context from the previous shloka, but we'll focus on the next statement and attain lasting peace. And then he says, O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that no devotee of mine is ever lost. Now he's asking, he's prompting Arjun to say that. He could have said it himself. That, hey, listen world, I'm telling you that no, no, no devotee of mine will be ever lost. And he's saying that devotee. And then he's asking Arjun to declare that. Okay, So the reason for that is um, God under exceptional situations and circumstances can break his vow. Because for the sake of his devotee, he is willing to compromise on his own vow as well like he did in case of Bhishma Pitama. He lifted, he had taken a vow not to lift a weapon but he did uh, during Mahabharat war. And that's to fulfill the, the vow of devotee because his devotee had taken a vow as well that I am either going to kill Arjun or make God lift, break his vow. And he said, all right, I am going to take that uh, upon myself but I will not let my devotee down. So the reason he's asking is uh, asking Arjun to declare is because he may break his word, but when it comes to his devotee, he will never let them down. Okay, it's a huge thing if you think about it. And God is called Bhakta Vatsal. So that is why he's called, telling Arjun, but he's saying devotee of mine. Okay, and that is what we are going to focus on today to bring in the compare and contrast with other paths as well and how, what it exactly means. It's a very important thing to understand in that sense. Okay, Now, God is promising sorry what happened okay now god is promising to take responsibility of which of the following did he say that you know the gyani will not be lost or he's saying the karmi will not be lost he's saying bhakta will not be lost he's very clearly saying that none of my devotee he's taking responsibility which in hindi said he's taking take up ownership, accountability for his... He's putting himself, he's sticking his neck out and putting his neck on the chopping board, right? Uh, what do you call that? On the chopping block. And saying that their word, I will not let, let it... So you declare it. I will let, let, not let my devotee down at all. Okay, so now let's move on. Why, what is God saying in this shloka? Let's uh, continue to build on that. So... Okay, this is uh, from Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Directly, he said, God is one, but he has innumerable forms. He is the creator of all and he himself takes the human form. Okay, so he's also, Guru Nanak Ji has also said that. So I found it, I thought I'll bring it to the session today. Now he's saying the Jnani person of knowledge will not be lost. No, he's not saying that. Karmi rituals shall not perish. He's not saying that. And he's making this promise for his bhaktas that they shall never come to ruin. Okay, so this is the one. Okay, Ati Shokti Aroos. I'm re repeating the same thing again and again. Um, but uh, I think that hopefully helps. So he reiterates what he had stated in 922 as well. In the previous uh, shloka, he personally carries the burden of maintaining those who depend upon him and engage in exclusive devotion unto him. Okay, so this is the condition. The prerequisite is Nirashrit, depend on him and exclusive devotion. Okay, these are the two conditions. And then he says, okay, I will take care. You don't have to worry at all. I am at your service. So God is going to become your servant and he's going to take care of all your needs and you don't have to worry about it at all. And the same thing happened during Mahabharata war as well. Then when Bhishma had taken Tat Pratigya that I'm going to kill Arjun uh, tomorrow. And then it caused a panic in Pandava camps with Bhishma's Pratigya was like Daghichi's Dawn and then Bhishma Pratigya and and there are, you know, people in our scriptures who are famous for their, uh, you know, something that has uh, 
you know they are famous for so similarly bhishma was famous for his pratigya once he gives his word he'll make it happen so then krishna goes to the pandavas camp and they say yudhishthir and everybody is in panic what's going to happen it is going to turn the war upside down because if arjun is defeated and he is killed tomorrow it's as good as pandavas losing the battle so they were thinking okay what to do now bhishma has taken that oath and then krishna thinks okay let me go and check with arjun also if if his brothers are in such a panic state let's see what arjun what state arjun is in and then he goes and arjun is sleeping happily like a baby there so krishna wakes him up and said arjun haven't you heard what bhishma has said and why are you sleeping like you know haven't you heard about that he said i have heard about it are you not worried he said why should i be worried you should be worried i mean it's your end of the day you are my sarathi so if when you are there why should i be worried so he is offloaded outsourced complete worries to krishna and that is the state he is in and he is willing to take his responsibility okay so now let's look at the difference between the brahman and bhagwan right so let's call out the difference and so understand that um, why i will build that connect as well now nirgun qualities nirvishesh which without attributes and nirakar without form this is who what brahman is we spoke about on the other hand bhagwan <coughs> sorry okay because brahman does not manifest and in this case because is without qualities it does not manifest the quality of grace okay this is a very important point to understand gyanis who worship at nirgun nirvishesh nirakar have to rely entirely on self effort for progress it is a double edged sword it's your complete effort because you are taking responsibility for your journey god is not however when you start doing sagun sakar bhakti he is an ocean of compassion and mercy okay then now you are you are tapping into the divine grace divine support which is called grace when you do your sadhana you are saying that i don't have the ability to do it on my own i am dependent on you and god is saying i am more than happy to carry your burden so that is another difference that happens on gyan mark you are taking the ownership on yourself on you are relying on your own means and your own intellect to continue to progress on that path uh in this path you're tapping into the grind phase so taking support from god himself right so that aspect gets manifested only in the bhagwan form not in the case of brahman this is a very important point to understand now what does it mean actually let's look at it a little more technically our scriptures say in fact this scripture is uh, nayadarshan which talks a lot of magical stuff right it says markat kishor nyay and marjar kishor nyay okay next time whenever this thing pops up in your mind about gyan and bhakti bring in monkey and cat to your mind and it will put things in perspective so markat kishor nyay is this is the uh, the the kid of a monkey now what it says is when the baby monkey the onus is on the baby monkey to latch on to the mother mother stomach when the mother jumps from one branch to another okay so the monkey has to hold her very tightly because if the grip is loosened or the grip is not strong enough then the monkey will fall mother does not take responsibility for it the, the onus is entirely on baby monkey okay so baby monkey has to latch on to it very strongly on the other side when a small kitten is being you know is latching on to its mother now in this case the mother is taking responsibility to carry the kitten from point a to point b okay wherever the cat is going so this is called marjar kishor this is markat kishor that is marjar kishor now you saying why are you bringing this point the reason we are bringing is that markat kishor logic of the bobby and marjar this is the the difference between the two paths in our scriptures and what is that difference so formless can be compared to the baby monkey where on the gyan mark you are taking the ownership on yourself aham brahmasmi because you are thinking i am god only so that's it all right let it manifest take your own time so you are taking the ownership of your journey on your own self and while on the path of devotion you are relying on grace god's grace that okay i am going to do my sadhan bhakti but beyond that i i really don't have the means to attain you god or to purify my mind or to overcome maya that that is a ground up or the uh, approach 
that a devotee takes. And then that starts tapping into the divine grace part of it. It's the same thing, right? If, if a mother, a kid says, mom, I need help. Mother is more than happy to say, all right, what can I do for you? And kid says, no. Right? And I think in our cash up segment, we did that presentation that graphically it was shown when the kid says, all right, I can take care of myself or you take it. Mother also starts taking a step back. And in the Gyan Mark, the very premise is that you are God and you continue that practice until you, you know, neti neti concept of it. So God also takes a back seat there and you have to progress on your own. Now there is still a difference. Can you progress completely on that path? We will talk, tackle that question as well. But the fundamental approach in the Gyan Mark is you, you rely on your own means to progress on this path uh, where it can be very tricky because you can fall down, Maya can play its tricks, pride can develop and anyways you cannot beat this, the goodness or the Vidya Maya on your effort alone beyond a certain point. So you can go up to a certain stage possibly till the self-realization part of it but to complete the journey you, you cannot do that uh, on this path. But on this slide, the key message is the monkey's baby and a kitten. Would you rather choose to be a monkey's baby in thus this path or be a kitten? That's a choice available. Both the choices are available. Now, moving on, um, what is yoga? Bhakti Shatak. Maharaj Ji has called out very karma yoga, arugyan, sab sadhan, yadapi bakhan. Binu bhakti sabai janu mritak deh binu pran. So he says, scriptures describe the paths of karma, yoga, and jnana. This is what Bhagavad Gita talks about, all the three paths. But he says, if these are without bhakti, these paths are like a dead body without no soul. And dead body, body without soul is uh, devoured by vultures. And vulture in this case is maya. So in order to infuse life or pran into it, we need to bring bhakti into the mix. And bhakti is the one before all the zeros that you keep on adding through any practice that you might be following. Yes, Sri Ramya, you wanted to ask something? And then furthermore, let me complete that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. yeah, let me complete this one and then we can take the question. And furthermore, okay. he goes on to say, Krishna Kripa Binu Jaya Nahi Maya Ati Balwan Sharna Gat Par Ho Kripa Yeh Gita Ko Gyan He's saying Maya is poor, powerful. It cannot be eliminated without a Shaktiman Krishna's grace. And it can be received only by selflessly surrendering to him. This is the sense of Gita's teaching. Maharaj has very clearly said that in Bhakti Shatak as well. Go ahead, Sri Ramya. You can take the question and then I can move forward. Uh, yeah, Radhe Radhe. So, uh, like, uh, I, uh, we discussed it earlier, but sorry about asking it again. Karam Yog. Yog aspect means we are already uniting our work with God, right? So some amount of bhakti is already inculcated, right? If I'm explicitly not able to take out time for uh, bhajan, kirtan, and uh, if I know that I'm working for God, would that be okay? No, so Karam Yoga is you're building that consciousness um, to God, right? It's a, it's a stepping stone to have that... Um, Nirantarta. Now, the end game is where your mind is con constantly absorbed in God. Karam Yoga is, you know, the starting point is you are doing it for the pleasure of God. You are relinquishing or giving up the results of your actions, the fruits of your actions, and you are doing it for the pleasure of God. But beyond a point, the idea here is that eventually it would lead you to have that consciousness carried around throughout. Because what is the condition God has uh, laid out very clearly in Bhagavad Gita? He's saying Sarveshu Kaleshu Ma Manusmar. He's not saying Sarveshu Kaleshu minus when you are working or doing something else, right? He's not saying that. Sarveshu Kaleshu means every movement, which is a pretty, and you know, that's an aspirational state and seems pretty difficult, right? How would you continue to have that thing? But what that means is building that attachment to God. When you have attachment to something, it is occupying your mind regardless of whether you are thinking about it or not. We know it through our experience, right? Let's say you are very attached to something or someone. Then do you have to put effort to think about them? No. It's occupying your mind even when you are doing something else. So God is saying Karam Yoga is a stepping stone. That is the way to do that because we work. We have to carry out so many responsibilities and duties in our life. And when we start practicing Karam Yoga, the science of work which he has called out so beautifully in chapter 2, that actually enables you to start building that consciousness. But the end game is to have that non-nirantarta, ananyata, and nishkamta. 
that is the yes, the goal finally it's a means to an end not an end in itself i hope that answered your question so there are three categories of karam right first is vikaram vikaram is whether you are doing neither spiritual duty now nor your so social duties properly uh, which is where most of the people fall okay that is where at least i fall uh, i feel most of the times that is vikaram then the second thing becomes karam right second thing becomes karam where you are aligning to your social duties properly okay but not so much spiritual duties uh, where people are satvik right scientists researchers and stuff like that but mostly people in medical profession they that we are doing good and we don't need to think about god so they are karmis so we karmis then karmis at least they are aligning to social duties predominantly then comes karma yoga you do your social duties also and then you start doing your spiritual duties because you've already started bringing god into the mix right so you start but and the the hope is that over time that proportion of your spiritual duties everything starts becoming spiritual nothing is secular in that case and in parallel to that is karma sanyasis where they reject their social duties and only do their spiritual duties right so that is these are the four categories of karmas which are possible karma yogi the idea is that you carry out both and that is recommended by lord krishna as well but then it should lead you to a state where nishkamta ananyata and nirantarata should come that is the whole idea sarveshu kali shoes the condition so that was a short answer to your long question so hope that helped yes yes thank you wonderful sham ji you wanted to say something or ask something yes thank you so much yes ek sawal aapne bhi kaha ki uh, people who uh, worship brahman uh, uh, formless form they are they don't get that grace but since i'm uh, worshiping god in any of the forms brahman parmatma or bhagwan form am i supposed to, <laughs> supposed to get grace because I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to, i'll get to that so you say god is brahman yeah. brahman is yeah. like yeah. your hat tied his hands okay grace will not come i'll i'll get into that now i am going to explain that and i'm going to bring the con i've created a chart for that so just one more sawal is neha se bhi hai mera bhi sawal hai since we we know there are two ways margat and marjat since those do not these people who are gyanis they all know these things <laughs> It's a good one. So you go, and, you go and ask a guy, somebody who's been ardently following Gyan Mark. Okay, I've had my share of talks with them. In fact, that's how my journey started. You go and ask them, "Have you read Bhagavatam?" And see what they say about Bhagavatam. Okay, so when we are sanskars, or on a particular path, it's very difficult to get them to align to or even. I don't know. This knowledge is available, but something somewhere it doesn't click, or they don't even get to it. They don't even get that access to it. Bhagavatam is defined as the fruit, ripened fruit of all of our scriptures. They don't get to read that at all. They don't read that at all. Okay, they they consider it as just stories, while it has all the philosophical, tattva gyan, Gita gyan, Ramayan gyan, everything in it. And they don't even get to read to that. So it is a interesting philosophical discussion. Maybe we can have it, but. although this is accessible but without god's grace they will not get to this knowledge or it will not click or their intellect will not cooperate something happens at only than us on the more intellectual than us they are more learned in every sense than what we are as as common person we are good, good question so we'll talk about it more i don't know why that happens but it happens okay because i think as you continue to progress your own pride starts swelling as well i know it all ikea syndrome right i know it all and i know what's best works for me and some people just go to the i'm going to rely only on my experiences so there are too many barriers on this path if something is simple and it is clicking to you and it is becoming a very logical to you then that is god's grace doesn't happen so easily okay but yeah it's a good question maybe you can uh, talk a little bit more but let me cover the content i have to cover my course today okay curriculum uh, otherwise we'll have now sage now i'll tell you about there's a uh, you know sage vishwamitra and uh, sage vashisht sage vashisht one invited him over for a yagya or something and as a yajman you know he because he came as a guest so what he offers him back is 1000 years of tapasya to him as a gift back to sage uh, vashisht sage Vish, uh, vishwamitra offers him that okay and then sage he also comes you know sage uh, Vishwamitra also goes to Vashisht. First, he is invited over Vashisht and gives him thousand years of his penance or his gyan tapasya. And then Vashisht also, uh, and then Vashisht invites Vishwamitra, and then 
he said you know as his dakshina or you know as his guest of honor he offers him a few moments of bhakti he said it's not a fair exchange i gave you thousand years of, of my tapasya and you know gyan sadhana and you are giving me few moments of your bhakti it's not at all a fair exchange so in order to resolve that then they go to i think brahma ji or narad ji okay pardon me i might have forgotten and they say let bring in anant shesh anant shesh he can resolve this dilemma for you so then vishwamitra goes and says anant shesh hey, we need you urgently vishnu i think they had gone to vishnu ji to resolve this dilemma that it's not a fair exchange can you please resolve this he said okay you have been summoned so that you can resolve this case for us so anant shesh is holding this whole loop right so anant shesh said all right sure let me come with you but as he starts walking with vishwamitra you see what happens the earth starts wobbling okay and uh, vishwamitra puts thousand years of his penance as the strength for that you know to hold that globe and it continues to wobble he's not able to so he comes back tells vishnu i couldn't get him so he sends uh, vashisht and same thing vashisht says you are been summoned by vishnu to resolve this dilemma you know two moments a few moments of bhakti and thousands of years of gyan tapasya which one is uh, you know is it a fair exchange or not so he asked to Uh, come along and then again it starts wobbling that uh, starts wobbling but then he also puts his couple of moments of bhakti there and then the earth stabilizes and anant shesh is able to get there and he is able to bring there sage vishwamitra is already there and he said okay but so now the anant shesh is there let's ask him this question he said isn't the issue already resolved your thousand years of you know gyan gyan sadhana and on the other side few moments of bhakti you know both the few moments of bhakti is more powerful it's not a not i mean it's not you are right it's not a fair exchange because bhakti is even more powerful than that so that is the glory of bhakti uh, on this path it is so powerful because devotion is that uh, tool or that power that can even enslave god no amount of tapasya gyan anything uh, is enough to actually enslave god on this path now let's bring out a path comparison where we are going to talk about it and then take questions i'm i'm sure it will open up a lot of questions but let me call it out uh, on this and then we'll take questions as well right so these are the paths that we have spoken about brahman formless parmatma and bhagwan form so let's look at it what are the different parameters gyan yoga ashtang yoga bhakti yoga satchidanand satchidanand is an attribute is it available on all Yeah, answer is yes. All three, right? God is God. Such a thing, and it's never bereft of that. How about easy entry criteria? Brahman? No, it's not. Klesho adhik taras te sham avyakt sakt cheta sam. Lord Krishna himself has said in twelve two, in embodied beings like us, it is exceedingly difficult. It is difficult to understand, more difficult to implement, and exceedingly difficult to make anybody understand. Okay. And then finally, the only refuge a gyanee would say is a oh, nirvachniya. Okay, everything becomes a nirvachniya beyond a point. Paramatma, it is also a difficult path. Okay, Ashtanga Yoga path, Bhakti, it's easy path. Easy path to begin with. Entry criteria, no, it's everybody has an eligibility for it. And for gyan mark, they say the A B C of gyan mark starts when you are in the advanced stage of renunciation. You don't need to be uh, in advanced stage of renunciation. on the path of bhakti all are welcome to begin with right anybody can carry out in god's name chanting recitations everybody is eligible for it highest and closest realization of god no you realize god but have you realized god in its entirety no answer is no it's like when you are trying to explore sun you have just explored its rays possibly surface but the core not yet it's only through bhakti you can get the highest and closest realization of god don't confuse it with have i not realized god yes you have realized god and you are beyond maya in all the three but have you realized the the complete uh, realization of god the answer is no unless you are on the path of devotion love for god i mean love for god people you would say talk to a kriya yogi or anybody what is this what are you talking about hocus pocus stuff what love and all that stuff they say if you do this we are entitled to get this grace he has to intervene stuff like that so there is no concept of love for god in any one of these right you may have awe and reverence on the path of ashtang yog for the cosmic form of god that ishwar right they sort ishwar paridhanat ishwara on the cosmic form of god but that love aspect is not emphasized at all in any of these paths 
grace of God, I put star, terms and conditions apply. Now, for a jnani, finally, for you to even get moksha, you have to do a sagun sakar bhakti. Your Guruji will tell you, you have come this far. You have done self-realization. You have conquered avidya maya. But beyond this point, you have to become sharnagat to sagun sakar because that, that's how you will draw grace and then you will even attain moksha. So even though you have been... Um, you know, worshipping the Brahman formless aspect of God, even to merge with that, you will have to rely on God's grace. So, Sagun Sakar Bhakti, they have to do eventually. So, Shyamji, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, they have to do that. Okay, without that, that path is also, they cannot do, uh, go solo for the entire journey at all. Okay. So, the point here is, you cannot be an entrepreneur in spiritual path. Entrepreneur, I'm going to go solo on my own. No. You have to have a boss and that boss is God because he is the governor of Maya. And that, that without that boss intervention, you cannot conquer Maya, no matter whatever practice you may put it. See, if, if through a practice we could attain God, that becomes a price tag for God's God realization. What is a price tag for something? See, we go and buy things in shop. So whatever we are willing to pay, whatever is, a, you know, and we get that. You pay, you get that, that whatever payment you make becomes a price tag for that. Similarly, if some kind of a tapasya or self-effort would result in God realization, it becomes price tag for that. Okay, You do so many of years of austerity, tapasya, and uh, scriptures will say that's the price tag. You do that and God will be all yours. It doesn't work like that. You have to rely on God's grace to attain God. And uh, that can only happen when you worship Sagun Sakar God, not the Nirguna Nirakar. Finally, you have to do Sagun Sakar Bhakti uh, whether this concept is known to you or not, but this is very clearly stated in our, okay, uh, you know, on Maharajji Swamiji has spoken about that. Paramatma also, you do cosmic form of meditation of Ishwara, so you have to rely on God's grace for that as well. Bhakti anyway, grace is the operative or the buzzword throughout our journey. Grace, grace, grace. In any other path, they, they laugh at grace. What is grace that you're talking about? Okay. So, Tat Prasadat Param, even Arjun says towards the end that with your Tat Prasad, he's not saying by my self-effort or through my intellectual prowess, I'm able to understand your message. He's saying Tat Prasadat Param. That means with your grace, now I'm able to understand this message and Nashto Smriti Labdha. Now my ignorance has been dispelled. Leela and Parikar? I think it, I won't say boring, but yeah, I mean, the path is like you don't get the variety and all the stuff that a devotee gets to relish, bhakti, kirtan, and then uh, going and leela, dham, so many things you can get, right? Narrate stories here to that. And God has made it pretty, uh, what you call it, enriching for us and provided us so much of variety through his avatars so that we can relish and purify ourselves and perfect the goal of our life. Simple path, of course not, because we are relying on our self-effort, right? You know, it, it is tricky, a lot of, things you have to do that in but in the path of devotion yes it starts becoming exceedingly difficult as you progress because now you have to build sanskar nishkamta let go of your selfishness bring in humility and all but that transformation the, the key uh, what you call the x factor on this path is that you are tapping into god's grace and when god's grace intervenes it can make impossible possible even the most difficult things um can be achieved because now you are relying on God's grace. It's like a child relying on mother's strength rather than going solo. Enslaving God, there's no question in any mark, right? It's only through Bhakta Vashya. Is Bhakta Vashya. Bhakta is the key point. Can't stand in its own? No. You have to mix Bhakti. Bhakti, can it stand on, on its own? Yes. Bhakti doesn't need any crutches. It's self-sufficient on its own itself. So this is a quick compare and contrast. Now we can take any questions that you may have around this topic because uh, uh, I think this pretty much sums up what we have spoken about. But there are a couple of other aspects. I want to wrap it up. Tomorrow we have a 30 minute because we have our spiritual cash-up segment as well. So we'll be able to wrap it up uh, in that. We can take any questions related to this today. Sandhya, Radhe Radhe. Oh, Radhe Radhe. First of all, a quick comment from Swapan Kumar Patraji. Very nice and helpful slide regarding comparison of the three paths. And now I have like a few questions. So I request uh, Neha to come on audio because Neha is asking very interesting questions. So Neha, if you can come on audio, that will be very nice. 
why don't you ask these questions for the benefit of other people as well? Yes. In the meantime, while Neha raises her hand, can you please unmute her? Uh, you continue, Sandhya. Yes. So, uh, one of the question is, can someone get grace of God without having love for God? Grace of God without having love for God. Now, it's a very interesting question. I'm just thinking out loud right now. Now, what is the condition God has kept for imparting this surrender. grace? Surrender? Yes. And surrender cannot so, happen. No. Can, and then, who, who do we surrender to? Only love. Yeah, I think love is a probably whom we trust completely. Is it for surrender? Yeah. Whom we trust completely. Can you yeah. surrender to somebody without trusting or loving that person? And, and then when you trust somebody, love probably is would automatically manifest right for that person some form so i think they are an interrelated concept uh, and when you love somebody you're automatically surrendered you don't even question that right correct yeah that so question. yeah yeah so the, yeah basically temporarily at least or at some point of time they have to love god and then only they can get grace and then only they can realize god right yeah and why would you surrender to somebody whom you don't feel any connect with Correct. Yeah. Them, right? so when you build connect with somebody i think love is a spontaneous manifestation um, around that path right so and then when you love somebody surrender automatically happens that is the story of a naval officer right who's uh, on a ship along with his wife and the slip runs in the ship runs into some rough weather and people are panicking and this guy is very calm and his wife asks him, are you not worried? You know, sink, the ship will sink or something. So, so he then draws out his sword and puts it on her neck and uh, asks her, are you not worried? I may kill you. She said, of course not. You are my husband. You are my well-wisher. He said, same way. I have that faith that, you know, my well-wisher is there. So I'm not worried. So the point is when you have trust and surrender um, that love is probably related to that as well it automatically would have happened or would happen or is part of that only right so and that that brings me to like another aspect here like uh, all their life like the gyanis and yogis have just been conditioned to not like have a loving uh, ex i mean understanding of god so of course it sounds very, very difficult to suddenly uh, switch to the state of loving and getting the grace. So only way I feel it can happen is like, you know, uh, God is causelessly merciful, right? So they are types. Itna effort kare, so I can let me just do the uh, merciful grace on them is what True. I am. So you can be actually smart on this part. So there was a, there was a Gujarati, okay, no. Okay, take it as a compliment. He was traveling with Jeff Bezos on a flight. And he said, okay, let's play a game. So Jeff Bezos said, sure, game on. He said, let's play a game that I'll ask you a question. And you'll ask me a question, okay? But when I'll ask you a question, and if you can't answer, you give me $1,000. If I can't answer a question, I'll give you 100 because you're a richer person than me, right? So it should not matter to you. So Jeff Bezos said, all right, fine, game on. He said, tell me something which has three feet while climbing up the mountain and two feet while coming down. So Jeff Bezos said, I don't know. He said, give me $1,000. He gave him $1,000 and dozed off. So Jeff Bezos came up and said, tell me, you know, he didn't tell me the answer. He said, I don't know. Take these $100. So it was a fair exchange. I mean, was it a fair exchange? It was a smart exchange, right? So the point is getting your wow. bank, maximum bank for the buck. You can be smart about it. Why to go through such austere practices and stuff when you can tap into the grace of God who's willing to, you know, give all that he has for us. But probably some of our conditioning that we spoke about initially, past sanskars, our conditioning, it doesn't become easy for us. You know, our probably our pride or our intellectual thing that does not let us take to that easy path to begin with so easily. And we think that bhakti is for people who have less intellect. Okay, who go with some blind faith and but I'm telling bhakti is for people who are super intelligent. Okay, they really get that aspect of it and they become smart about this whole thing. So this is how this has to be taken. But yeah, sometimes those things can prevent us from taking that path. They said, right, when you go to learn music, that teacher would ask, okay, uh, do you know music or you don't? Because if you know, I, I'll take you 200 bucks. And if you don't know, I'll take 100. Why? Because 
hundred would time would be spent unlearn. because make them unlearn if they are not you know uh, at up to mark on that. So yes, it becomes increasingly and those sanskars don't let you take to this path or rely on grace and devotion and all these concepts. They don't stick so easily. Uh, and if it sticks to you, it's a great, huge grace. It doesn't work like that. But yeah, Guru, when Guru's grace happens and they pick you up, they can make it happen just like that. Yeah, so that was my actually another question. So can a Maya Deen soul become a true Bhakt without having a Bhakti saint as a Guru? That's a good question. So your your uh, your spiritual your the spiritual progress the cap for that is limited by the guru you have. Okay, so if now if let's say uh, if you go to gurus, gurus will tell you beyond this I cannot take you. Okay, for this for brajaras, if you are aspiring for those bhavs, you need to find a rasik saint. They'll be very honest and tell you that. So yes, if you are under the tutelage of a guru who is not a rasik saint, you cannot get to the braj kaksha or the class because only guru has the ability to take you there. And even after God realization, you will still continue to be within the class of your guru only. They will tell you the kind of sevas you can get to her and those are concepts. But yes, it is capped with the level of the guru that you know, or that, that guru has attained because if somebody is of shantras or vaikuntras, they don't have the eligibility to take you to the prajras or tell you about the prajras because they will themselves tell, you know, this is this is the class that we can take you to not beyond that. And if you really need to go to find, find a six saint in that case. So it's a good question. Yeah. Yes, Swati ji. Yeah, Radhi Radhi. I would like to narrate a small story for okay. two minutes. Shams uh, ji was asking the question about this, that don't they know that uh, market and this uh, whatever you explain the cat and monkey so in that one leela of uh, krishna when he went with his uh, friends to this um, gochar and leela one day he didn't didn't take any food with them and when he went there then he asked sudama the and friends that i am very hungry bring go and bring food from the nearby brahmins who are doing the yagya and so when he went there they uh, he, Brahman said, no, we will not give you right now. Let us finish our yagya. Then we will offer it to the yagya. And then whatever we are left over, you will get the food. Then it came back and then to, they told the Krishna that they are not giving right now. But he said, no, I am hungry and I want food now. Then he said, but how we will bring? Then he said, you go and ask the Brahman's wife. They will give you the food. So then when again the friends went to the Brahman's wife and they told that Krishna and Balram are very hungry and they want the food. They knew about his leela, so they immediately packed the food and they themselves brought the food and gave it to them. And then after that, they said, now we cannot go back because our husbands will not accept us because we have uh, not telling them all this. So then the Brahmans, when they came to you know, Krishna said, no, you go back, I will do that way that they will listen to you. And then when they uh, went there, then the Kyani said that you, we are learned one, we know everything. But you still not knowing, you directly went to the God and feed him. And we were doing the rituals. We are jnanis. Still, we did not uh, fulfill his wish that we should leave this yagya and give the food to the God first. Just wanted mm -hmm. to clarify this. Thank, Thank you, you Radhiji. Good story. Yeah, that's what happens. Sometimes we are, uh, they say, right, there's a saying that uh, we are so focused on the frills that we forget about the frock. So who are we trying to serve here, right? But then the point is, do you really know that it is God? And then uh, when you serve God, you are serving the root. And when you serve the root, everything else gets its, um, you know, satiation or all by itself. So yes, that's a good question, a story. I think it is related in, uh, uh, I think, Bhagavatam as well. And that drive home, drives home the point. So thank you for narrating and sharing that, Swatiji. Keshavji. Any more questions? ये सवाल नियर नियर जी का नियर नियर जी का भी था मरकट और मटेट वाला उनके एक और सवाल भी है मैं नियर जी को बोलिए पहले ऑडियो पे आए can yeah. request people who have uh, their doubts in the comment uh, yeah. chat she has to come on audio and then we'll answer her question we all can we all should come on the video we can answer their questions but who is asking them yeah because uh, uh, we can She's sending a lot of random messages as well. So yeah, it, it I know may, it. that is why I know uh, it'll not she'll not come on no. audio. So tell her to come on audio and then we'll we'll answer the question. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Keshav ji, please go ahead. Radhe, Radhe. Uh, Nitin ji, you started talking with I mean I've joined late. Sorry about that. Uh, about a ship. 
So it reminded me of I went to Ireland where Titanic ship was made, built. So that drowned. The unsinkable. Why? The unsinkable. Think, yeah. Unsinkable. I, mm -hmm. And because the captain of the ship was overconfident about the designer engineers, designing engineers, because they had taken maximum safety factors into while designing. I know. It so was called the, you know, unsinkable at that time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the people around the captain told him that big house ice block is coming, man. Look into that. He said, Robert, oh, and not only that, all the richest people were there in that Titanic because it was very costly to buy the ticket. See the fate. Because we were they were not confident. The captain was, they were dependent on captain. So coming to the second thing about uh, you said the I, I say upadis. The swamis have upadis they got from their respective gurus, teachers. Now, Mahatma Buddha, it reminded me of Mahatma Buddha. He went to different swamis in this field. And whatever those swamis he came in contact with, they told him the maximum about meditation, doing what and what not and how to. And ultimately, the Swami told him that I know the highest one at that time. I know only up to this. Beyond this, you have to go and do on your own. Yes. And what he got? Oh, awesome. And and the other thing in Ireland I saw was one big sphere, steel made, and another sphere in that. So there the guide, I mean, it was unrecorded, uh, recorded so this, they said we the people they want to know the more details and depth of these two spheres. So I'm working on those two spheres. Nice. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Maybe we can bring in the example of Titanic. There are a lot of lessons to be learned from the story of Titanic, um, especially on you know pride and other things from a spiritual perspective there are a lot of perspectives we can bring around that but yeah thank you for bringing that reference thank you keshav ji the converse yes Samira. and then we have a few good announcements also right on yuva and all let's make those as well i think we have a lot of interesting announcements to make as well yes Samira, go ahead radhe radhe and feedback uh, has, has, ji, it been in... has it been sorry Samira, i just wanted to please uh, post the feedback tracker as well yeah, uh, just, right. we can fill it out thank you for the questions that might might have. And tomorrow we have our spiritual cash up segment and then conclude this shloka as well tomorrow. So please fill out the feedback tracker if you have any pending questions. Sorry, Samiran, go ahead, please. Yeah. So, Nitinji, in uh, Bhakti Yoga, they say that uh, when uh, someone is doing Bhakti and devotion, then when the person dies the, in the next life, when the soul comes as a human being, it is right. He starts from 101, not from zero. So in that sense, uh, a person following the Gyan Yoga and Ashtang Yoga, is that the same thing with them also? Or they have to go back to zero level? No, and then start? they're learning without Bhakti, you're saying? Yeah. See, it's not that. I don't know. It's a pretty complex. God would know that. But he says that any kind of tap and, and the austerities that you do, any kind of discipline that you are building... God preserves it for you. Now, whenever you start adding bhakti, you start leveraging the mileage out of it as well, right? So it's just a matter of adding that one and then those zeros will start counting as well towards the end, right? If you are doing it with the purpose of your material gains only, your health and stuff, sure, you'll get that benefit. But from a spiritual standpoint, the moment you start adding one or you've added one, all that will uh, you know, start to count um, uh, you, you know, at a different level altogether is how I understand it. But yeah, no effort gets wasted. Anybody who's putting in an effort is just going to get uh, uh, counted. Uh, but then for, in order to conquer Maya, yes, you have to add devotion. There is no other way out. It's not like I'll just do yoga without bringing God into the mix and that's about it. No, you have to bring Bhakti whether you do it today, tomorrow, next, this lifetime, some other lifetime, devotion has to be there. There's no other way out. And one uh, last question. Is Paramatma and pra uh, Pratham Purush both same or is it different? 
नो परमात्मा इज तृतीय पुरुष क्षीरो दक्षा विष्णु महाविष्णुशन Uh, Radhe Radhe, uh, listen, Ji, there you have again a very good uh, comparison thing. It's very interesting tabular form. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is: in yesterday's one of the slide was saying avatars of God. It was mentioned there all avatars of the same God are equal and complete in everything. Same God. So my question is: if you write the same God. do you mean by krishna's all the avatars of krishna are the same it should be like in the past you mentioned shiva shakti and all those things are also the same they are the same god but putting the word same god that is a little okay. um, out god, of the context to me same same can be taken away or part basically avatars of god we can say yeah, same i get that yeah same can be a little um The picture, the, the picture says all Krishna's avatars. So same refers to the Krishna's all the avatars. The Krishna's yeah, same, same means you when same implies different different God, okay. right? So no, it's God is God. Those same. So when the same word same is probably inappropriate, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Then that's a good one. I think no, you no, pay very you. close attention and get into the minute details. Very nice. That's so, why I don't get the slides. Arun, are you watching? That might be a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in kahoot tomorrow by the way please no not tomorrow day after sorry the quiz but yeah good quiz no, it's a good i get what you are saying so yeah makes fair point thank you pratusha thank you sam ji yes pratusha uh uh radha radha ji ka radha ji sir so my question was um, like uh suppose someone is born in uh, satyo and will that person be born in kaliyo later or in many other kalpas or yugas uh in order to you know get that story of krishna and get that story of rama so that his devotion increases because a person is that a person born in satyug has to do those practices for realization of god and he cannot be a bhakt not necessarily in fact i'll bring in some calculations of how much austerity and uh, you know these practices you have to do in satyug as compared to kaliyug to reap the same benefit but uh, it's not that uh, uh, you know somewhere laid out or at least i have heard that you can do god realization only in kaliyug not in satyug uh, hmm. what parameters benchmarks around that i don't know um, i think because we are in kaliyug the saints focus on that message but uh, it would be a it would be uh, a little diffi- difficult to imagine that god has not given us options to realize him in any other yugas other than kaliyug itself because any time you come in human forms you can do purusharth and when you do can do purusharth it gives you an ability to get closer to god or realize god or perfect your devotion so actually we are uh, at an advantage stage uh, when we are in say kaliyug so we know both advantages and disadvantages because why because the greater the threat the bigger the opportunity so if you think about it you are so distracted right our intellectual abilities our moral degradation so many things are so weak in us previously in other yugas people will once they give a word you know lying and all that was completely off the charts but in today's world you know right how how corrupted we are in so many ways we don't even have intellectual abilities to even understand things you know so whole lifetime we can spend reading these shlokas still getting that import is so difficult for us but then the god has simplified it so he understood that in kaliyug it will be exceedingly difficult for people to understand the message so he has simplified the process for us just take god's name you know or you know focus on his naam roop gun leela dham and you can attain him pretty quickly um but that also we find difficult to do so yes the opportunity is high in kaliyug actually if you think about it from that sense because it is probably most simplified not because uh, uh you know and probably because not probably but because of the fact that uh, we are weak intellectually physically and a lot of other ways so god has said okay my weak students will be in kaliyug 
my most duffer students will win kalyuk so let me make the benchmark easy the entry criteria easy for them Okay. Thank you so much. Adhirathi. Yes, Sandhya. Hey, shall I share the uh, video? Uh, sure. Let's uh, share the video and make the announcements that you want to make as well. Yes. So, first of all, this is going to be a video about something exciting, uh, which can clarify all our spiritual doubts. A systematic book. So let's just watch this video first and then we can discuss the announcements. Do you also ponder on these questions? When I have not seen God, how can I do Rup Dhyan or meditate upon God? What is the role and importance of Guru in our lives? Does God have a form? What does he look like? Is he just a light? Or is he like us? Music. The music is not coming for some reason. You have to unmute. Oh, is it unmute? Yeah, we have a very catchy music around it, right? Music was not coming. Oh, the sound also was not coming earlier. Sound was coming, but music, the outro music for some reason we missed out. So this was part one. We have part two, part three like this coming up. Be so sure I would encourage time. you also if you can do that and submit here. We will. We have created a series to create a buzz around the book launch. So I would encourage you to please come. I mean, it doesn't take much. Just put a K. Camera in front of you, and happy to share some questions with you. Say that, and then we will we will continue to release these reels leading up to the launch on twenty ninth. And also pre order your copy if you are in India. Uh, you will get thirty percent discount. Um, so just order your copy of this book. You know what all questions you will get answers for. Um, and uh, also check out the Radha Krishna Bhakti app. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, please download it. There will be a 30 day video challenge series on the same topic. Um, Yuva, you wanted to announce about that uh, as well. So, uh, we have earlier also announced about JK Yog Yuva Initiative. So, that is for uh, people in the age group of 18 to 30. There is some relaxation uh, allowed, so keep that in yeah, mind. If you are 30, 30 years, one day old, still you are not allowed. Okay, this is how it goes. Go ahead. Oh, there is. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, that being said, yeah, so uh, it is going to get officially launched uh, by Swamiji uh, uh, on 31st of May uh, here in Dallas. So, uh, and it will be live broadcasted everywhere. So, stay tuned for GK Yoga launch and Whoever is eligible to be part of this community, they should become part. Uh, please inform and spread the word around. Yeah. If you are yoga, you can participate. If you are double yoga, you can help spread the word around. Any other? Uh, I think we have uh, anything. West Coast Retreat is coming up. So yeah. you can register Actually, online. Actually, online registration is open now. So whoever was asking yesterday, Annapurna Ji was asking, right? So the uh, online registration for the West Coast Retreat which is starting on 25th of May. So it's from 25th of May to 27th of May uh, in Fresno, California. So whoever can attend in person, definitely do so. If not, online registration is also open. So please register and take the best maximum benefits out of this retreat. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so also, do we do yeah. Also, uh, like I said, the pre-order, you can do that in India. It's available, the book. And look forward to an exciting uh, question and answer panel discussion with Swamiji that is coming on on 29th as well. So the book launch is going to be uh, a big event here in Dallas. And uh, uh, someone is asking, how can we buy the book in US? So it will be available on Amazon.com as it's well. It's already Amazon. available on Kindle, Kindle, but you can check it out uh, okay. Kindle through India yeah yeah but uh, on amazon.com also if you want hard copy it will be available 
and you can also get it from jk oak stores like at the temple and everywhere else okay so should i share i see annapurna ji's hand raised okay so let's care uh, do we have time i think we've already run out of time um annapurna ji is it for the chanting we'll probably take two hands and wrap no, up no 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 it is uh, you know i got the uh, website for uh, online registration west coast oh great thank you yeah it, yeah it, it, I, yeah, I, I have it here, so I'm copying it. Thank you. That's why I raised my hand to get the link. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Great. So we can probably do uh, two hands today real quick because we are already at 10.5 and then wrap up our session. So go ahead, Sandhya, and then maybe we can take one more hand. <laughs> yes. Krishna Kripa Binu Jaya Nahi Maya ti balwan radhe radhe sharanagat par ho kripa yah geeta ko gyan radhe radhe jai radhe krishna radhe 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 krishna radhe the essence okay the essence of the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita is that no one can be liberated from the clutches of powerful Maya without Sri Krishna's grace and that grace is bestowed only when the soul surrenders to him. So this was the same uh, thing that we did in our session today as well, right? So Maharaji times it to perfection. Whatever we are discussing that comes on the verse as well and we didn't plan for it. It just happened today. It's exactly what we discussed today. Great. Thank you. Okay, let's take uh, maybe a couple more hands and then we'll wrap up. Riya ji, go ahead, please. Radhe, Radhe, ja. Radhe, Radhe. Krishna Kripa Binu Jaya Nahi Maya Ati Balavan Radhe Radhe Sharana Gata Para Ho Kripa Yahagita Ko Gyan Radhe Radhe Jai Radhe Krishna Radhe 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 Krishna Radhe 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 uh, Radhe Radhe, thank you. And Swati ji, last one for the day. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Krishna Kripa Venu Jai Nahi Maya Ati Balavan Radhe Radhe Sharana Gat Par Ho Kripa Yah Gita Ko Gyan Radhe Radhe Jai Radhe Krishna Radhe Krishna Radhe Krishna Radhe Thank you Radhe Radhe Thank you. Thank you Swatiji. Alright, so with that we come to the end of today's session. Tomorrow we will conclude this shloka finally. Uh, and also we have spiritual cash up segment. So look forward to that and please fill out the feedback tracker. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Good night, good day. Radhe Radhe Yes, Shamji, you wanted to say something? Yeah, Radhe Radhe. We haven't taken the picture in this very long time now. Oh, good. You reminded oh. that. So let's do that. Maybe last Thursday. Now we have new faces as well. Good, Shamji. You reminded us that. So last Thursday, typically... This Thursday we can take? This Thursday, people, you know, quiz, you don't see a good turnout. Next week. How about we do it on um, uh, on a, on a Wednesday? Know. Wednesday we have the ah, most... Man. Let's do it on a Wednesday. So please... Dress up, you know, like... <laughs> with your smiles oh, on. I think we are going to take some group picture. Good, you reminded that. So let's do it Wednesday. Should we do it tomorrow? Yeah, but we I can know, post we can... it in the full class. Or maybe next time. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next time. 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 Shukriya. And one more suggestion is whenever we ask questions in the chat window, जो जो पूछता है ना उनका एक बार वीडियो ऑन कर लें मे बी वी कैन आज द क्वेश्चन ऑन द वीडियो बट लेट अस सी देम ऑन ऑन वीडियोस 
it, the reason we are saying is because uh, uh, we have some unscrupulous elements. elements for the lack of a better word. I would say some miscreants. Uh, like Krishna had said, right? Some people, they put their energy in the negative side and then like we saw Shakuni or Amba when they get negative or they want to create something like that, they derive thrill out of it. So then what happens is I get personal messages, all that stuff. So that's why I encourage them. Can you please come on audio and they will not come on audio, right? So, but I would encourage you, you know, if you have a reason not to, audio is fine if you can't come on video, but we, we can separate the genuine questions or chats from the ones which are being created by uh, the same person you know repeatedly over and over again hopefully one of these days it will get settled down but until then we just have to deal with it but the reason we encourage them to come on audio is so that we know it's a real person who's asking the question okay Ji. but it's Perfect. not a deal maker not a big deal anyways okay great radhe radhe good night good day everybody i'll look forward to see you tomorrow. tomorrow so picture we will do tomorrow or Tomorrow, let's let's do. I think there will be full uh, crowd. Sure, we can do that. Okay, Radhe Radhe, good night, good day. Thank you. Bye.